Someone once said that seven days without prayer makes one week, and the week was spelled W-E-A-K. You know, when we think about prayer, what comes to your mind? Is it something that you do to ask God for things, or is it just something that you use as a tool? Let's think about prayer today as a way that we can talk to our Heavenly Father and just say what's on our hearts. Stay tuned as we talk about a purpose of prayer in just a moment. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. And now, Josh McCrary, The Gospel is Gold. Someone said that it's good to have a balanced diet, and what you do is you have a piece of cake in each hand, and that makes for a balanced diet. I'm reminded of one person. They said, you know, you should never worry about gaining weight because, after all, bigger people are hard to kidnap. <laughs> you know, you think about losing weight and how hard it can be sometimes. I could wish all day long that I could lose weight, but until I do something about it, nothing's ever going to happen. You know, prayer can be a lot like that. Someone once said that prayer is faith with legs on it. So I could wish all day long for something, but until I'm ready to meet God in the middle, my prayer may never be answered. Let's talk about the subject of prayer today. What does it mean to pray? If we were to give a biblical definition of what a prayer is, I believe it would be found in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Paul is writing to the church at Rome and he said, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they might be saved. He's talking about his fellow Israelite brethren and he said, My heart's desire and prayer to God. And you know, that's exactly what a prayer is. It is expressing a heart's desire to God. You know, I think as Christians, sometimes we sort of get lost in everything that's going on in Christianity. You know, we, we've got all these guidelines and rules that are set, and this is what we do at this time. And, you know, we go to church and we do these acts of worship and we do these things every day. And sometimes prayer can just be one of those things that we do. And it can lose its meaning. What does it mean to pray? Sometimes I have found that I have to get down on my knees and I've really got to examine myself. And I talk to God, the creator of the world, and I talk to Him about problems in my life. I talk to Him about struggles and how I may need help with some things. You see, prayer is a time when not just asking for things, but telling God things. And saying, God, this is how I feel. And you know, sometimes I may even be angry. There have been times in all of our lives, probably when I know we shouldn't be, but maybe we've even been angry with God. You see, the relationship that we have with God is much like all the relationships that we have with other people in our lives. There are highs and there are lows and, and there are all the things in between. And, and sometimes we feel great about our relationship with God and we come to God in prayer and we're thanking Him for all the great things that we have. But there are times when we're broken. There are times when maybe we struggle with sin and we approach God and doesn't feel so good. But you know, prayer is one of those things for a Christian that is a blessing and a benefit. It's something that all of us should do. It's interesting what Jesus taught about prayer. He said, when you pray, you, you notice he didn't say, if you pray. No, he said, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and in the street corners that they may be seen by others. And truly, I say to you, they will receive their reward. And you know what that reward is? Nothing. <laughs> their reward is exactly what they wanted, just to be seen by men. Sadly enough, they will be seen by men, but they will not be heard by God. 
he continues and he says, but when you pray, that's the second time he said that, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who's in secret and your father who sees you in secret will reward you. And when you pray, that's the third time he said that, when you pray, do not heap empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. You know what I think he's saying? Don't make prayer a ritual. Have you ever felt like that before? That maybe you were sitting in church service and they said, let us pray. And it's always after the second song, you know. And there's always a closing prayer and it's, you know, just something that we do. It's part of worship and we just bow our heads and we, someone leads us in a prayer. But you see, prayer is not a ritual. It's not just something we do in the worship service. I've got to remind myself that sometimes I need to go into that closet. I need to go and fight some battles. Talk to my Creator about good and bad things. Just as I would sit down with my wife with a cup of coffee and tell her, how much I love her, how beautiful she is, how I'm so thankful that I've been married to her all these years. But then there are times when I may talk to my wife and express some things that I don't like that have happened, whether in her life or mine. Maybe both of us will tell each other we're sorry and maybe we'll shed some tears. You see, that's what a relationship is. It's not saying, hey, how are you? See you tomorrow. You know, and sometimes we allow prayer to be like that. We just, you know, go through the motions and we just say, hello, God, thank you for today and I'll see you again. No. He, Jesus is saying, don't be like the hypocrites when you pray. Don't pray to be seen of men. Don't allow prayer to be a bunch of words that are meaningless. But prayer time in the Bible is expressed as a time of sorrow, a time of thanksgiving, a time of happiness, a time of praise, a time to ask for help, a time to express feelings, frustrations, humility, hurt, love. It's a time to think about other people and to pray for other people. You know, one time my wife was uh, telling me about all these different things that were, you know, going on that day. And she was talking about ordering shampoo online, some special type of shampoo that she liked. She was going through a, a whole nother story about something totally different. And it was just like, uh, seemed like to me it was going here, 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 up there, down here. And I was like, where is this going? And I looked at my wife and I said, Look, you've got to tell me a point. I don't understand. Where, where is this going? She got that look in her eye and she said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just having a conversation with you. <laughs> and I got it then, you know. It's like a light went off in my head. I was like, oh, okay. All right. I see what we're doing. We're talking. <laughs> you know, sometimes I guess it may be good to Talk to God in that way and just tell God what's going on. You know, it doesn't always have to be, Lord, I thank you for today. Thank you for your son. Please forgive me of my sins. Please be with so-and-so who's sick. You know, we, we get into this thing. Let's pray to God about all those great things. Let's, let's ask God to help other people. Let's, let's ask God to forgive us of our sins. Let's be thankful for Jesus. Be thankful to be a Christian. But let's talk to God about us. That's what we want to talk about today. Jesus said this, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. And for everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks it will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? 
If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who's in heaven give good things to those who ask it? He's talking about prayer. And he said, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be opened to you. What does he mean when he's talking about prayer? I want to notice three things today. Prayer is desire that is expressed. It is a direction that is explored, and it is a determination that is exerted. Number one, let's talk about how prayer is a desire that is expressed. It's interesting how Jesus there in, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, he said, ask, seek, and knock. What do all those things say to me? Well, I'm thinking of someone who's, who's looking for something. He has some kind of desire. And that's exactly what he's talking about in this passage. We have a desire to talk to God. And he said, which of your children comes to you and asks for bread? Will you give him a rock? <laughs> or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? No. Not only does God want us to talk to Him, God wants us to ask Him for the things that we need. You know, I told my son one day when we were riding in the car, he's getting a little bit older now, and I said, son, I want you to know that if you ever have any problem, no matter what it is, if you've done something wrong, or even if you're excited about something or, you know, whatever it is in your life, I want you to always understand that you can talk to me about anything. I wanted him to know that I am always open without judgment to talk about whatever is on his heart. That's what God is saying. I want you God says, I want you to come to me. I want you to ask for that bread. I want you to ask for that fish. There's a desire that is expressed when we pray to God. But you know, I don't always get the things that I want from God, do I? You know, God, Jesus is not saying, if you ask for a Ferrari, God's going to give you a Ferrari. No, that's not what he's saying. We have to be reasonable in this desire. Let's talk about how first in this desire, I must keep God in heaven. You know, I can't expect God to be this spiritual bellboy that just answers to my every call. And I say, Lord, just give me that house with the white picket fence and I'll be so grateful to you for that. That's not how it works. I've got to keep God in heaven and realize that, hey, if he does that for me, then he's got to do it for everybody. If God were to give me a Ferrari, then He has to give everybody that wants a Ferrari a Ferrari. So we've got to be realistic here and figure out, okay, am I realistic in what I'm asking God to do? You know, my wife's mother passed away with cancer. It's been about four years now, and we prayed so hard for her. My little children all begged God to heal her. But she didn't make it. And every time she went for a, a scan, her cancer got worse and worse and worse. And I was angry. And I thought to myself, how is God not hearing my little babies? pray for their grandmother. And my wife, she was distraught when her mama died. My wife was too young to lose her mom. Even today, my wife still has times when she'll wake up and she just said, I can't stop thinking about my mom. I didn't understand. I thought, why did God not hear me? But the truth is, if he were to heal a godly woman like my mother-in-law, 
from her cancer, then he's got to heal everybody. You know? If he's going to perform some kind of miracle for her to be healed of her cancer, then, then he's got to do it for everyone. Now, I can pray to God, you know, help the doctors find some way to help this person who's sick. But the truth is, if God were to do a miracle, he's got to do more. <laughs> There's a lot of people who have cancer. John wrote this. He said in 1 John chapter 5, and verse 14, this is the confidence that we have toward him. If we ask anything, notice, according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have desired of Him. You see, he, what He's saying is, I've got to understand that God wants to answer prayer, but he, God is still in heaven. Okay? And God is, is limiting Himself on what He can do as far as a miraculous is concerned in this age, because then He has to do it for everyone. And the Bible says that God is not a respecter of person. So that's what John is saying. He said, if we ask it, we have to do it according to His will. And when it's according to His will, and I ask, then I know that God will answer my prayer. You know, I saw an image, uh, I believe it was on either Facebook or something like that, and it was an image of someone who was hugging another person but then they were looking at their phone while they were standing, hugging another person. And, and what this represented was our day and age, how we spend so much time on our phones, you know, that, that we forget about our children sitting right next to us. We forget about those that we're hugging so close. And, and the picture was saying this with no words. Here's what that message was saying. We can be so close to someone but so far away. You know, prayer can be that way sometimes. You know, just because something didn't turn out the way that we wanted, we, we can't stop praying. Let's keep being close to God in those times. So, number one, prayer in the Bible is a desire that is expressed. So I need to keep God in heaven, but I also need to keep myself in God's hand. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 3 and verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against them who do evil. Now who is there that will harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you suffer for righteousness' sake, you'll be blessed and have no fear of them nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ as Lord and holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. What is, what is Peter saying? When, when you go through hard times, and specifically persecution is what he's talking about, but this would apply in our lives today. As any hard times in your life, he said, just remember that God is watching and listening to your prayers. But I've always got to honor Christ as Lord. And always be prepared to give an answer. And when we do, we are keeping God in heaven. We are keeping ourselves in God's hands. And we are also keeping others in our hearts in this desire. You know, there's a song on the radio and it, it says, uh, Sometimes we get angry, but we must not condemn. Let the Lord do His job and just pray for them. I pray your brakes go out running down a hill. I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill and knocks you in the head like I'd like to. I pray your birthday comes and nobody calls. I pray you're flying high and the engine stalls. I pray all your dreams will never come true. Just know wherever you are that I pray for you. <laughs> well, that is not how prayer is supposed to go, right? Know when we pray for others. The Bible says in James chapter 5 and verse 16, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Jesus even said that we are supposed to pray 
for our enemies. Got to be genuine. This desire that is expressed is, is something that, that Jesus is talking about. And He said, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. This is something that is genuine desire that is expressed. And it keeps God in heaven. It keeps myself in God's hand. And it keeps others in my heart. Let's talk about number two. Not only is prayer a desire that is expressed, but it is a direction that is explored. It, it takes us to another level of life. Literally. You know, we, we focus more on things above when we pray more. We're de desiring a direction of life that is totally different than people who are not praying. There were three preachers and they were talking about prayer and, and one said to the other, he said, you know, the best position that I have found to pray is when I'm on my knees. Well, the second one, he said, no, let me tell you, the best way I have found is when I'm standing and bowing my head. The third preacher, he said, well, I used to work as an electrician and the best praying I ever did was when I was upside down hanging from a telephone pole. <laughs> That's probably true. You know, sometimes the best praying that we ever do is during the hard times. It brings us closer to God. You know, when we need God, He's always there. Somebody said there's no atheists in foxholes, and I believe that to be true. This direction that is explored, you, you, you know what it does? It is a direction of dependence on God. It takes me in that direction. When I realize, okay, I can't do life without God. I need Him to be a part of my life. The Bible says He also told a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and they treated others with contempt. This is in Luke chapter 18 and verse 10 and, and Jesus talked to those religious people of the day. You'll notice the religious people and they treated others with contempt and He said, let me tell you about your religious attitude that you have. There were two men who went up in the temple to pray. One of them is a Pharisee and the other is a tax collector. And the Pharisee, standing by himself, he prayed. Here's what he said. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as the tax collector. I fast twice in a week. I give you tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, he stood afar off. He wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. It's interesting what you think about this religious man is doing. It's, it's almost like he's praying like this. <laughs> Lord, I give you tithes of all that I possess. I fast twice in a week. And all I just need you to do is just look at me. This tax collector, he was crying. The Bible says he beat himself on his breast and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Which one do you think went down to his house justified in his prayer? Was it the religious man who looked down on others with contempt? <laughs> no. His prayer didn't reach the ceiling. But this man who, who poured his heart out, who is the guy that Jesus said he went into his closet and he talked to God about everything that was going on. He, he had a real relationship with God. You know what this guy had? He had a show. He was the one who walked through the marketplace with his hands like this, with those large garments, and he walked around saying, bless you, my child, bless you, my child. And he would pray publicly in the marketplaces and seem so religious, and he said, I thank you, I'm not like other men, but he was lying. He was just like everyone else. Real prayer is 
is a direction that is explored. And it, it takes me in the direction of complete dependence on God. That's the tax collector. You know, Jesus knew who those people were when he was talking to them. He knew they needed God, but they thought they didn't. He bragged about what he did. Friend, we are all dependent. You know, one was dependent, one was distant. And I've got to ask myself, who, who do I want to be? Well, there was a boy who was praying and he thanks God for everything. You know, he, he thanks God for the, the table. He thanks God for the, the forks and the spoons. And uh, he paused just for a minute and he said, Mom, if I thank God for the broccoli, won't he know I'm lying? <laughs> yeah, well, the little kid was smart. You know, we learn to develop this as we go out through our Christian lives. It is a desire that is expressed. It is a direction that is explored. Jesus told a parable in Luke 18, which incidentally is the same chapter of the Pharisee and the publican. You just go back up to verse 1, and it says, He told them a parable to the effect that when uh, they ought always to pray and not to faint. You know what that means? Development. Prayer, this direction that's explored, it, it takes me in the direction of dependence. It takes me in the direction of development. That's why Paul said to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. That's why Peter said, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you, 1 Peter 5, 7. That is the direction that prayer takes us. Dependence. Development. Let's talk about number three and finally. Not only do we see desire expressed or direction explored, but we see that prayer is a determination that is exerted. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be opened. But you know what that means? Keep on asking and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and it will be opened to you. This is a determination. It's interesting how he said, which of your children, if he asked bread, how many days out of the week do you think a person needed to eat bread in that day? Every day. <laughs> Jesus used something in that teaching that people needed all the time. Jesus wants people to pray to God all the time. But you know, the sad truth is the Bible says that God does not hear the prayers of sinners. John chapter 9. Prayer is something that is for the child of God. Nowhere in the Bible do you read of a person being saved because of a prayer. You see, because God doesn't hear the prayers of those who are not His children. We do not want to have a right relationship with God today to experience the benefit of prayer. Like when Paul said, don't be anxious about anything. But by everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, Philippians 4 and verse 6. Friend, if you're willing to obey the gospel today, God will be open to hear your prayers as you become a child of God. But you can't be saved by saying a prayer. You don't, you don't find an example in the Bible of people doing that. But in Acts chapter 2, when they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That would have been a perfect opportunity for Peter to say, You say the sinner's prayer and you'll get saved. But he didn't do that. In Acts chapter 2 in verse 37, when they said, What shall we do? He told them in verse 38, To repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Will you do that today? Experience the beginning of your relationship with God that will be saturated with prayer. Thank you so much for viewing today. God bless. Oh, Lord, why should we